Continuing the series of weekly contest 278, let's shoot for the fourth question of the list, groups of strings. Here in this question, we are given an array of strings and we need to group them together. What we need to do in the end, we need to return the total number of groups that are get that will be formed and the size of the largest group. I hope all of you have gone through this question very carefully. In case not, don't worry. I'll talk about it by the presentation and I'll try to extract the maximum content out of this question because reading the question is of utmost importance. So let's quickly move on to the PPT. Groups of string lead code 2157. It's a hard level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. The most important part of solving a hard question is understanding the question carefully, extracting the maximum out of it. So let's go step by step and let's try to extract the maximum point that will help us arrive at the solution. So let's get started. The first constraint that was specified in the question is each string consists of lowercase English letters only. What does this, what does this mean? What you can infer out of it? You can simply infer out of this that the maximum size of any word would be equal to 26 because duplication is not possible. Therefore, at max, a string can have 26 different characters. This point is very important because it will help you reduce the space complexity and the time complexity of your algo. Let's look at the next rule that was specified in the question. Two strings S1 and S2 are said to be connected if the set of letters of S2 can be obtained from the set of letters of S1 by any one of the following operations. So the biggest hint that you get from this rule is that order doesn't matter. For example, you have a string named ABC and the other string named CAB. Both of them will correspond to the same group. This is a very important point that should be highlighted when you read this question. Also, they have provided few rules before you can do this matching. You can add a new character to the set of S1. That means the first word. word. Uh, you can delete exactly one letter from the set of S1. Uh, if you carefully look at these two statements, then they are complementing each other. Addition of a new character or deletion of a new character and checking whether it matches with some other configuration in the word set or not. It's exactly the same. So what do you need to do? You need to go for either one of them. And instead of going for the addition one, we can go for the deletion one and it will make the same thing. The third one is replacing exactly one letter from the set of S1 with any other letter. That simply signifies that if you have a letter word named ABC, then you can simply replace C with any of the 26 characters that we have. Obviously, you don't want to go for the duplication ones. Similarly, you can replace A with any of the 26 characters and C and B are prohibited because they are already present in the string. So these are two important constraints to remember. And if you carefully analyze, I have written few test cases here. A, A, B, both of them corresponds to the same group by virtue of deletion. Similarly, you can say the same thing by virtue of addition of a new character. If you add B to this, then it would be the same. If you remove B from this, then it would be the same. So it means one and the same thing. As a result of which addition and deletion complements each other. The next one is BCA and ABC, CAB. Both of them correspond to the same group. These are anagramic configurations of the same word. Similarly, the next one is BCA, CABE. Both of them will correspond to the same group. How? You are simply deleting the last uh, uh, character from CABE and what is left is CAB. CAB is same as BAC because the order really doesn't matter. If you have understood these instructions carefully, then you are quite close to the algo. Now let's try and look at the third hint that was specified in the question. Words can be divided into one or more two non-intersecting group. It is connected to at least one string of the other group. So let's try and analyze one case. Here we have one group where there, where there are three strings S1, S2 and S3. In the second group we again have three strings S4, S5 and S6. Now what do you do? You check whether S1 will belongs to or matches with any of the string in S1, S2 or S3. If it does, 
then what will you do you'll simply club this with this group similarly if s1 also matches with any of the string bin s4 s5 or s6 then again you will club s4 with any of this group as a result of which s7 will act as a bridge between this group and this group and in totality they'll form a bigger group in all such questions the biggest hint that we get is to go for the union find approach where in the question you will see the word group blindly follow the union find approach because all the group kind of questions are targeted towards applying union find make it as a thumb rule union find is something that is not new to us we have already solved couple of questions in the past and if you are not aware of union find concept basics then i'm attaching the link to the playlist that we have built where i have explained the union find concept in general so do give it a shot first and then come back to this question let's proceed ahead the question asks us to return the total number of groups that would be formed and the size of the largest group which is pretty simple and straightforward if you are using the union find technique now let's talk about the hints that we have taken and how can we use those hints to actually build our algorithm the biggest one was uh, the each word will have at max 26 characters and the order of the characters really doesn't matter both of these hints signify us to use bit masking technique how bit masking will help us because uh, if you create a mask of each word then you can easily do a comparison with any other word for example let's assume we have a word abc so how can you generate an integer mask out of it uh, represent this in the binary format uh, and it will have at max 26 characters so 0th index points to a first index points to b third index second index points to c so 0 points to A, B points to first and C points to the second index and so on. 26, 25 will point to the zth character. So in case in your string you have A, B, C present, then you will enable these bits in your binary representation. So this gets enabled, this gets enabled and this gets enabled. So the first three bits are enabled starting from 0, 1 and 2. Now the, the thing, uh, it's very simple. You can cast it into form of an integer and generate the corresponding integer value for which this mask is generated. Let's proceed ahead. Uh, the question asks us to use two properties. You can remove each character and check whether it can be unified with any other word in your input array. Also, you can replace each character with any other 26 characters and check if it can be unified using the union find approach. If you have understood this much of logic, you have understood 90% of the algorithm. Now let's move on to the coding part where I'll tell you how to go about it and finally conclude the approach. The first and the foremost thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to create a map of integer comma integer type and the key would represent the mask for each word and the index would represent the index at which that word is present in my input array. I go ahead and create an array for masks. And this is pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, we uh, have created helper method get mask and I have passed in the current word into consideration. I generated that mask and I have put it back into my map that stores mask to index map. And the key would be the mask and the value would be the index. Then moving, moving forward, I have defined union find object, union find equals to new union find and I have passed the number of elements or the number of words that are present in my uh, words array we iterate over each word one by one for i equals to zero i is less than an i plus plus what do i do next i want to unify all the anagramic strings for example we have a b c comma c a b both of them will call it, will have the same mask therefore here i am unifying all the anagramic strings Let's proceed ahead. Let's look at uh, the further steps. I iterate over each word. I remove the current character uh, that is present in my word and generate the mask without that character. I check whether uh, that word or mask is present in my mask to index map. If it is present, then what do I do? I simply unify th those two up. Otherwise, I go ahead and replace each character with all possible 26 characters. 
I generate a new mask with replacement and I check whether that updated mask is present in my mask to index map. If it is present, then again I go for the unification process. In the end, I simply return the group count of union find and the max size variable of my union find. Now you'll ask me what are these two attributes. Don't worry, I'll tell you the updations that I have made to the regular union find approach. So here I've created four variables. The parent array is the general standard of union find. Uh, the size represents the size of each group. So I've created another array that represents the size of each group. It's similar to the rank one. Then I go ahead, I have created a new variable named group count and max size represents the maximum size of e uh, the, all the groups that are present in my uh, bifurcation. So let's look at the constructor method first. Uh, the group count has been initialized to n, assuming that all the strings belong to n different groups. The max size is updated to 1, assuming that each group has a maximum size of 1 unit. Parent has been initialized to new int n and size has been initialized to new int n. And both of them uh, have been set, parent of i has been set to i as a standard way of union find and size at the ith index has been set to 1 as a default case. Pretty simple and straightforward. This method is exactly same of the way we find the parent in union find. And the crux of the problem lies in writing this union operation appropriately. So let's go ahead. We have two integers passed a and b whom we want to unify together. If a is equal to b, then we skip the process. We don't want to go for the unification process. Otherwise, we find the parent of a and the absolute parent of b. If both of them are not equal, that means we want to go for the unification process. What we will do, we'll extract the size of parent of b and parent of a. So whatever is lower, we set parent of a to pb and size gets updated to uh, to the sum pb gets updated to pa plus pb because you are making or joining two groups together. Similarly, max size gets updated to max size comma size of pb. Otherwise, we'll make the parent of pb as pa size gets updated to pa plus pb and again the same kind of thing the max size get, gets updated to max size comma size of pa also since you have merged two groups together you reduce the group count variable by one not that tricky not that difficult it's just an extension to the regular union find approach so let's try this up accepted this brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. And with this, we have solved all the four questions of the weekly contest 278. I hope you did enjoy all the four questions. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.